Hello and welcome everyone for the second time today. We're going to be heading into the other match that I was talking about earlier and that will be between Italy 2 and gonna be of course facing the Poland. So let me right now get everything set up here properly for you. So you can follow it through as they are already in the middle of the draft. So let's also join on that. Uh, uh, monitor capture for you and let's have a look into it. Uh, do we have that here? So the death is already underway between Italy 2 and their opponents from the Poland and it seems like the Poland at this point is going to be having, well so far they have banned Khmer but also gotten Persians, so fairly interesting combination for them as far as denying what the opponents will be able to get. So Khmer there with the ban Goth and Spanish for the opponents so far Indians, Britons which will manage to sneak that ban in with the Vikings and the civilization so far picked for the Polish Persians, Mayans, Huns, Mongols and Slavs. Damn, that's a really good pick so far. That's a very good array of civilizations in them. As for the opponents, Italians are the last ban for the Italians. The Italians are getting Franks, Chinese, Ethiopians, Malians and Malai. So at this point, I think that really the right about now the pick sifting, or the sif picking, sorry, <laughs> the other way around is quite a bit better for Right now the Polish, let's see, they are gonna be back in and ban in Celts as the last one. It could be a bit of an attempt to actually ban a civilization with some kind of siege. Because right now they have the powerful Slavs, potentially even the Mongols. Also pretty good with siege obviously. Now the next civilization, Japanese. And yeah, well they cannot have a bit of a problem in there, I think, in the Italians. Because having Franks, Chinese, that's of course solid, but the rest of it is bit on the questionable side, considering what the opponents are gonna be having as an option, so I'm wondering if maybe they'll be wanting to go for Magyars for the other horses. They probably could be wanting something along those lines, like Magyars or Lithuanians or Cumans. But overall, it almost seems to me, or it already seems to me, that, well, the Polish are kinda slightly winning that banning and picking battle here. You can see having Vietnamese with Mayans, double strong archer civilizations. Persians obviously with Slavs, also solid the Hans, Persians and Hans basically for horses if they need to, if they want to, as we have run out of music it seems like, yep, from the first <laughs> soundtrack of today's evening, so let's switch into M Age of Empires 1 soundtrack, as we're gonna be following through with the band here, and the last civilization for the Polish is going to be Burmese, yeah that's something that we sometimes see, used and especially picked, not like that much used, but another picked as otherwise on the right flank it's gonna be Incas for Carlino aka for Italy, very unusual choice, that's the first one I'm seeing that in the draft if I remember correctly so let's see what he's gonna be having as a plan with them, maybe some kind of fun in the early stages, who knows but nonetheless this is the result of the Sif picking and banning and therefore for the Polish we do have the civilizations as Persians, Mayans, Hans, Mongols, Slavs, Vietnamese and Burmese and for the Italians it's Franks, Chinese, Ethiopians, Malians, Malay, Japanese and Incas. And otherwise civilization banned are Celts, Spanish, Goths and Khmer with Indians, Britons, Vikings and Italians. Quite solid powerful civilizations, bit curious about the ban on the Italians in there. By the Italians. <laughs> Don't want to be fight fighting against their own comrades maybe. Or maybe they are aiming for a water map. And considering the bands of Vikings and Italians, maybe. Maybe they go in for something along those lines, like a cross. Who knows? It would be the case all the way. But otherwise, what is potentially gonna be the pick for Arabia here? Hmm. So for the Polish, I'm thinking it's gonna be fairly standard that we are gonna be seeing the Vietnamese and Mayans for the flanks with the archers and in the pockets Persian and Han. I don't think there's gonna be anything out of the ordinary here. That's a solid lineup all around. And for the Italians, Franks and Chinese, quite certainly with Ethiopians. So Chinese and Ethiopians probably on the flank as the archers. And then they need to be taking the Franks into the middle. And with that, I don't know, it's gonna open. I mean, then that is certain what they're gonna be picking in there. Maybe the Malians. Maybe the Incas. Not sure, it's gonna be a bit of an interesting setup they're gonna be having for the Arabia. I'm really thinking that the Polish will be having quite a bit of an edge. But, we're gonna see that later. If that's going to be the case or not. 
Hmm, seems like they've already started. Uh, UK1, not really, but yeah, <laughs> the name is not correct, but it's alright. Okay, let's put everything of them. Text and image. <laughs> Can see where is this UK. Yeah, well, they actually played versus UK yesterday. So that's probably just gonna be the same name from there. But well, at any rate, we're gonna be starting here. And therefore, the second match of today's evening is gonna be on, on yet another Arabia with Italy 2 playing with the players of Pan Carlino, the host of the tournament himself. He's gonna be right now choosing to play with the Malai. Then he's gonna be joined with... This is gonna be a bit hard for me to properly recognize who's playing with whom. Uh, Los Gachulato. Gachulato probably, yeah. Los Gachulato is gonna be the next player for the Italy 2. Ethiopians is gonna be his choice. Then Shades is another Italian with the Franks. And the last one is going to be... Nanimaren, the yellow player with shiny, so yeah, kind of exactly as we expected. Goes all the way through other side of the map. That's going to be the Polish with Blackfire playing as the Huns. Yeah, he really plays them all the time with PL Rex and uh, playing the Persian, so that basically double horses available in the pockets. Then my Statichny is going to be playing the Maya on the flanks, and Zamziak will be choosing the Mongols for the flank in there. Interesting. So blue should be the flank against orange. So we can see that Zamziak is gonna be already stealing the boar from <laughs> unfortunate Zgochilato. So as a second boar, but this is obviously gonna be right now the normal occurrence for Zamziak. But considering as a Mongol, he's gonna be stealing the enemy boar. He might be even heading into a bit of a red. So far, blue is knowing about like one boar. He sees that. That that is definitely stealable as well. So far. As he's aiming all the way into the other side of the map to potentially see if he could be still in himself, he would be having to turn all the way to the left here. As uh, so looking on the other side of the map, Nani Marin and my Statich might be having a bit of fun himself or themselves. Uh, still one minute left to potentially cast Dre and call Dre. Right here, there's gonna be boar potentially available for my Statich to be also stealing if he wants to. The second boar is. Is it already gone? No, 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 no. It's already killed rather. Uh, there is a board that could be stolen all the way to the left. We are looking at one board getting lured in. Second is already getting eaten. Yeah, that might have been already eaten in there, considering the amount of villages. It's a pretty good goal though for him, as we are near the 350. So as there was a bit of an attempt to steal the board, it seems to me that maybe that's not even gonna be right now a rep. And therefore, quite a huge advantage for Zamziak with getting the board. So Re is not called. For the Italians, even though it was it would be definitely worthwhile, especially in the matchup that we have here. The stone is a bit unlucky for Zamziak, but I don't think he's gonna be minding to extremely much. Also, obviously, he's gonna be going for some fast castle, maybe for scouts, a bit hardcore, considering that he's gonna be having the edge on the foot, and therefore that should be also resulting into maybe even faster advance into the next age, and all kinds of things along those lines. But much more importantly, he's having quite an excellent gold mine behind his base. So that's pretty excellent. As all the way in the middle there, well, it's going to be a bit of an annoyance going on as, as Gechulato was trying to build a few more walls here with the houses, but he needs to be a whole lot more careful as even Zamziak is going to be joined by Blackfire. And therefore, it's not going to be finished just yet. At least Zamziak is going to be losing the scout, which is probably not that much of an extreme problem considering that Blackfire is right next to him and probably be able to let him know enough about what is going to be going on and what's going to be coming forward from the game. Uh, so basically with the full health village right now already coming forward, it's going to be a whole lot easier for us Gachulato to finish, especially considering that we are only at 6 minutes, so therefore the feudal ages are still not going to be coming all that easily. We're going to be quite an easy wall into the top for Zamziak. Two uh, basically squats or two spots and single walls of the Palisades and it's going to be all fine. Uh, so the bottom it's going to be taking a lot more wood from Gachulato. And otherwise, on the left, we are gonna be looking at the second boar getting lured in. Actually, the third one. Yeah, so there was a boar stolen in the end. As it was kind of frontish, if I remember correctly. So, congratulations, I guess, on Polish stealing boar on both flanks. And obviously, that's a huge disadvantage for both of them. <laughs> I'm liking this by Blackfire. Look and see how he's basically just trolling his opponent, trying to <laughs> deny right about now, even deer. Doesn't want to be killing it, 
Please at least gonna be making sure that his opponent is gonna be having the hardest time getting it right next to anywhere close by in the middle or maybe even the DC. Yep, just gonna wait on disrupting there because there was blue obviously working on it. So whatever he can be doing is going to be a bit of an edge for him and for his whole team. As some first feudal ages are gonna be coming forward. He also should be switching into the village account to see if somebody's gonna be fast castling. So far, Nanimarin coming a bit faster, but a bit higher on the villages. And considering that he's on the left side, as the Chinese here, maybe it could be fast castle by him. We'll see how many more villages he's gonna be interested in clicking in. But so far, he doesn't have the food yet. As uh, so on the other side of his map is going to be Mayan, my Stadichny, and obviously the Mayan is gonna be quite effective as far as producing the arches in the feudal age in that, especially considering the excellent gold mine that he has and it's already coming in with so far both flanks for the Italians actually are both flanks going fast castle or whatnot no Nanimarin is definitely because right now he's at 25 villages already he's gonna be right now at 26 and he's desperately trying to get as much food as possible and it's apparently not working for him yeah well that's a bit of a sad story here they didn't seem to be working out, or uh, they doesn't seem to be working out that gloriously. So this fast castle, sorry, fast castle is gonna be probably a bit of an issue for the Italians, I'm afraid. As my strategy, especially since he has stolen the board, which is obviously one of the reasons why it is working kind of that badly for the Italians. It might be having quite a bit of an effect. Can see already dropping the barracks so that once he's gonna be in in about a few seconds, he's gonna be able to just instantly drop also the archer and just quite an excellent timing by him. Exactly as he finished, he also is gonna be finishing with the advanced time. As the trash so far doesn't seem it should be having all that much of an effect, even though there is a hole here that isn't there. Oh yeah, there was. <laughs> like Lucky Teal noticed at the last second, otherwise it was gonna head into the brother issue. But it's gonna be fine for the time being. As all the way to the right flank, quite proper, even double walling. Yet again, this is almost like some kind of black forest for Gachulato, but considering that he's most probably also going for fast castle. Looking at the 26 villages before even clicking in through a few lage. He's still gonna be making even three more, so he's actually going quite a bit greedy one maybe. 30 villager. Considering he's the Ethiopian. I mean like against the Mongol, we can see that the Mongol is coming for a few archers. So that's actually how powerful they are, because that, that is actually a hole, but he just created it by destroying a palisade chip. But just to finish my thought, just a few years ago, on VK and even before that, Mongols would be just always going for the scouts, even on the flanks. But here, considering that the on DE melee units are really a whole lot weaker and archers are a whole lot more powerful, it seems to be a whole lot more of a meta to be just going whatever. Whatever civilization you have there on the flank, always go the archers and it's going to be the correct choice if you can of course control them properly. In the middle, Shades is going to be going and trying to raid Blackfire. As he does have obviously open base, Ow. he hasn't managed to wall off properly and fully yet. And there's obviously a huge hole all the way to the left and even a bit more to the down here. As you can see that purple, why he has kinda secured himself in with a gold mine. This is actually kinda nice arena. <laughs> we have a palisade arena right now for purple. He unfortunately is not gonna be all that much helping with that wall into his teammate. But maybe it's not gonna be all that much needed. As so far this is pretty much only raiding right now by Shades against Blackfire, but Blackfire is probably gonna be able to handle it just fine. Not only by the scouts, but also by just a few spearmen. Look at how the number of the scouts is fairly low. All the way to the left, it seems like that Zamziak is gonna be already knocking on the door and on the palisade walls. Okay, as that is gonna be sending some reinforcements into at least slightly help, but he definitely doesn't have the numbers yet. So he can only kinda slightly scare the opponent so that he's gonna be running away. And not exactly engaging all that quickly into opposing side. And he's gonna be even trying to drop the tower, which at this point seems to be like a reasonable reaction to all of it. As we are looking at, well, pretty much a tough situation here. And it almost seems to me that quite frankly even Spechulatu could be attacked earlier than even the tower will be finished. We'll see about that one. And hey Andre, uh, basic correct name is, this is not B teams, it's two and one. They are basically not B teams here, they are first and second teams, so it should be correct that way. Here on the challenge, it's all that way. If you're basically gonna be typing bracket, then you can be seen all the names of the teams, so... 
I'm just using it how it is. <laughs> I'm selling as I bought, as it said. Okay, that's plenty of random houses here. So basically it's trying to be keeping this alive as long as possible. He did manage to get this get the tower up, but we need to be quickly checking to the bottom side because the map is fairly open here and with the raiding by no oh, Pancalino is defending, but rather PL Rex is having quite a few horses in here. And with the arches from my Statichny, so far it's looking quite a bit better for the Polish team. Is there a difference in bloodlines already? Not yet. You can see 45 both of them. Not really any kind of edge. For either team yet and nothing seems to be even coming forward as far as upgrades only potentially the card i mean for red and he's gonna be relinquishing at least a few villages but there's gonna be a pause and much more important that they are the bloodlines so far they are coming from blackfire so not entirely relevant for the fight here that we are having on the left flank as it seems that the defense should be really successful but not at least successful I mean, like it is successful defense, but still it's also meaning that it's also successful for the Polish because they are keeping the enemy inside his base and therefore from raiding their own bases and that usually is going to be resulting into a bit better fight. To the top though, the Scatulato as he's trying to advance into the castle age as the first player in the game as he went for the 30 villager advancing to feudal is gonna be apparently slightly suffering for it. The gold getting denied is a huge problem for a castle age. Faster castle age advance is gonna be getting at the secondary one to the bottom but is Orange Novin, for example? Nope. Nope. Hasn't scouted there yet. But it should be just a bit of a question of time, I'm assuming. But here definitely red needs to be there as soon as possible. So shades. Let's see how quickly you're gonna be able to advance. Because for the opponents, that's gonna be uh, for the opponents, for the other players. And Carlino is also going. So that's the pocket for the Italians. But this is really heading into quite a bit of a disaster for Sgacciolato. Luckily, really insane luck. That is as a mid scouted because if it was, then his whole fast castle would be completely ruined. At yeah, this stage, it's, it's still gonna be a bit of a problem, but maybe he's gonna be able to get something out of it if he's gonna be quick enough and his opponents are gonna be slow enough on the other hand. There, there's plenty of archangels from my static need. This is definitely quite an important hill and where both the archer players are gonna be trying to go to. And obviously, even the horses because it applies even to melee attacks. The hill bonus. So far it seems to me that the numbers are a whole better for the Polish, as they were a bit before, but since they are fighting and were fighting right next to the TC, Second. it wasn't exactly all that much of an important advantage. Now that might be changing significantly, looking how obviously ready, oh, the green needs to be running away. And while none of them are having bloodlines, purple is gonna be just getting them, whereas a green isn't, so this is gonna be even better fight for him than maybe even green is right now realizing. Right now the 20 hit points is basically more than, almost half more than the greens are having. So this is heading into a bit of a disaster and this is why they are trying to engage. Unfortunately the timing is going to be slightly Ew. off. You can see the archers are quite far away so this is going to be, yeah, need to be coordinated slightly better. Now, now is the time to, sorry, now is the time to engage. Not only because of the bonuses but also because of the huge hill. Because obviously you can see that Nani Maren is not able to take advantage of that too fully. So well played by the Polish, getting tactical edge and at least also nicely played by Italians as Nani Mare managed to get at least a few arches all the way onto the slope. Maybe could be wanting to position a bit more to the right on some kind of clump for all the attack. But yeah, even though there are already knights coming in slowly, well, those bloodlines completely slaughtered with the arches, the scouts that were, that were there still from Pan Carlino. And this is just maybe resulting into more of a problem for the Italians. Doesn't have to be at the end of it all still, because right now the knights coming from right beside, and you can see of course the better elephants from the Malay in there, is going to be some kind of idea. And they'll be forcing at least temporarily uh, the archers to escape, and any kind of like assault from the Polish. Whereas on the right flank, just archers looking around, you can see that the attack has been stopped with the crossbowmen from blue. And while in the middle, they are going to be right now crossbowmen also from Zamziak. Together still with the army that was harassing the Sgaciolato just a bit earlier. At this point it seems that they're gonna be heading a bit more into the middle and maybe Red is gonna be able to defend. Because he could be having at least a few horses already prepared in there. But so far not the numbers that would be exactly enough to deal with the army at hand. So looking at the villages, 36 for Sgaciolato, he obviously was the one under quite a heavy pressure. On the other hand, PL Rex had already 46, wasn't he 49, sorry, wasn't he 49 just a bit earlier? Hmm, 
weird. That has to be just some kind of my hallucination or whatever, as we are having a bit of a pause. Not well, at any rate, continue with the villages. There are going to be 50 for Pan Carolino. Maybe actually that's what I was looking at. Yeah, it's right nearby, so it's basically just jumping around here in the scoreboard. So I'm guessing I was just looking at Pan Carlino. He's having the strongest economy with PLRX the second best, and otherwise everything fairly equal. Just Gacholato having a bit lower amount, but it doesn't have to be all that much of a necessary issue. Just definitely some kind of assistance will be needed to be yielded to his teammate, but unfortunately doesn't seem to be having exactly enough units just now. Only about like six crossbowmen against this pretty solid army from the opponent as Gachulato is gonna be already resigning with right now the attack also from the top as on the left though they are moving forward but it seems that they are already gonna be recognizing that simply the right flank is gonna be falling at this point with orange and right now gray even with only scouts getting through is going to be probably enough as it doesn't really seem like there are gonna be exactly enough knights for it even though where are they? Ah, there they are. Oui. That's a non small number, seven knights. That is something that can work because the scouts are right now gonna be fairly useless. Because women are obviously a problem. But the issue is that blue doesn't have all that many army to send there. But still it's a bit of an early one, I'm guessing. But considering what's happening on the left with PLRX and my Statichny, with already having quite a solid army, whereas the opponents... I mean, like, not bad. You can see coming forward with plenty of elephants there. Some crossbowmen getting up on the numbers, so I think that the left flank is fairly alright. Especially considering Pan Carlino's really good economy. And the best in the game at this point. So quite nicely played by him there. It seems that they are deciding that the right flank is gonna be already gone. Because the problem is that, for example, Blue, you can see he lost a few villages here. He's dropped to, well, they're still kept at 37. You can see right now the decomposing bodies and clothing here in Blue. He would be a breach to the top, so therefore economical losses. And therefore it also means that he cannot even all that much help with his crossbowmen to the bottom. So it would have been one versus two, and even though the knights are coming, and the numbers probably wouldn't fit all that well. The question is how long he's gonna be able to kinda like supply more and more because the opponents aren't. You can see that Grey doesn't have anything extra in there. He will be just about now switching into the horses or would be. And on the right flank. He has a pretty much full on switch into Scatchelato. So, not sure, maybe they could have tried to fight a bit longer. I mean, like, the Polish obviously are the favorites here in the match, but nonetheless, maybe would have liked to see a bit more fight, unless there was some kind of drop, and maybe you're gonna be seeing the rest start. We'll see. Not really sure, but it seems like it was a proper resign. I can see some kind of reasons for it. So, it can be quite legit, but let's have a look through the post-game here, through the first game. With the largest army by quite some margin for Zamzia. Well, obviously, it helped him and for the whole Polish team. That yet again, the stolen boars on both flanks. Uh, he's making for quite a bit of an edge in battles like these. And when you are having it on both sides, then you can pretty much ensure much better starting position for you overall. Can see good echo for Pancarlino, Simas for Rex. A lot of gold for my Statichny with wood, obviously, as he was going for the arches rather than for the horses. Thirty-eight, forty. Yeah, well, the, maybe Sgachulato really shouldn't have gone for such a greedy one at thirty villages, the fast castle. Maybe like the twenty-six, twenty-eight villager. Okay, been working a bit better, or just basically play standard flank. Considering that he was the Ethiopian, which is a bit of a normal play in the tournament so far, as far as I've seen. But he tried. Didn't seem to be in the end working out. And obviously, even fast castle, especially when you are going to be losing the extra bar, it's probably going to be getting a bit trickier. At the same time, it could be also a way how to overcome that, right? As chances are, the opponent... They'll be having an edge in the feudal age fight because of it. So you might be wanting to kind of try and skip it. But then I read GG.